This is how we make the moonshine. Seasons are changing, winter is right around the damn corner, and pretty soon it's gonna be too damn cold to make any moonshine. You know, me and Jerry, we've lost a lot of sales this year to Richard and Craig. But if the Sapsuma run turns out the way I think it will, these sales can really help turn our season around. Get to grab us a couple buckets over here. I'll start loading this thing up. Before we mash in, we got to slice these things up, break them down, and get their juices out. You ready? I'm ready, son. Sand it down the pipe. Here we go. Now, no better way to do it than our apple slicer that me and Jerry built. It's just a three-inch pipe with four knives where whenever something goes through it, it slices it into four perfectly good wedges. Now all we gotta do is get them boiled up and get them mashed in. Give us some fire. Look at the juice. Oh God, they got it. Here's one more important thing I brought. I brought us a pH meter. This being a citrus fruit, it's gonna have the acid. We just don't wanna make sure it's not too much acid. Too much acid. Because you know, even though yeast like an acidic environment, it can be too much. Right. So I actually throwed in a little bit of baking soda. That'll help bring the pH up on it a little bit if it gets too low. I too. get the fruit, and you know what to do with it. That's right. Hell yeah. Yeah, this is ready to pour over, buddy. The rinds and the peels has got a lot of flavor. A lot of the zest off the top is really, really good. But a lot of that white pelf in there can throw a bitter taste to your alcohol. So we're just gonna simply strain all the juice through there and throw the pulp and the rinds away. Oh yeah, that's melt to the hits pot. Add our sugar in there and put some water in it. Then we're ready to check the pH level in this mash before we ever pitch the yeast. There we go. So what we're looking for here is the pH level. We wanna see about a 5.2 is where, we're, where yeast actually thrive really good on. A 5.2. So, you know, just water, just plain water is about seven. That's about really neutral. So right now we're sitting at about a, about a 3.9. 3.9, that is way too damn acidic for our mash. I just got to put baking soda in it to bring that pH up. I said we want to see about a 5.2. So the one thing about this right here is it don't take a whole lot at all. And you mean to tell me that right there is going to do uh, some uh, difference to this? <laughs> yeah. It's kind of like Goldilocks Center porridge. You know, if you get it too hot, you ain't going to eat it. If it's too cold, you ain't going to want it. But if it's just right, you're going to eat every bit of it. Five three. That's exactly where we're gonna be, man. Hell yeah. You done your damn thing, brother. The homework pays off. I reckon you're right. We just got one more important step. In order to, to work this off properly, Jerry brought in a special kind of wine yeast, which will put it to a really slow working process. We want it to take its time to work off properly. And so once you can breathe. You can breathe. Can't get no cre creatures in it, nothing like that. Sup, sumo liquor time. Come bail this bad boy. See what she's looking, see what she's looking like. Yeah. You know, I'm nervous as hell about this run. We're gonna reclaim our customers and win back Maggie Valley. We gotta make us a pair of moonshine. And it's pretty, ain't it? Look at that. It's flat as a flitter. Like some of that raw mash. Mm. Oh my god. That's orange alcohol right there. Damn, that tastes like a damn screwdriver, don't it? So if we can get one tenth of that flavor out of the Ooh, worm, damn, that's gonna be good, death. son. A sap summer screwdriver. Hell yes. We got everything just right on this run. We got all the sugar levels right. I'm pretty proud. I got A in science for the day, and this stuff's ready to go. I hope it turns out like Mike wants it to. Power in the hole. You know, I can't help but be a little bit nervous about how this stuff's going here today. Looks like we got steam, Bubba. Yes, sir, let's get this thing plugged up, get it rolling. You know, it's getting late in the season. Me and Jerry's not sold enough liquor to get ourselves through the winter. This South Summer run has got to be great. Well, it's amazing how fast it's running through them tubes. You can hear it, too. Yeah. Buddy, she's hot. It's coming down your way, babe. Oh, got a liquor coming out now. Oh, hell yeah, baby. Let, me put, let me put my pecker in it. Look at you. Look at there. Stuck at Pecker Ooh, like a true professional. All you can smell is them damn sap summer. Damn, that's orange J, son. Smell it, can't you? That sap me. I son. can't wait to drink that, baby. I'm gonna tell you what, if that taste comes through as good as that smell does, we're gonna be in some money. Mm -hmm. And I mean literally. Adios, Richard and Craig. I, I believe like. we're past the heads, though. What do you think? I ditch them damn heads, man.
Now it's nothing but to catch the, catch the money now. That's right. So how many miles is in this first jar? Over 1,200 miles. My God, let's better get her swapped out, babe. Yeah, it's about to run us over. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Is it taming down? Oh, my God, son. That is freaking mellow. It has a, just a very faint bite to it. Man. Oh, man. That takes me right back to them damn trees. They're sitting there pulling them sap summers off the damn tree. They're sweet, but yet a little tart, and that's what I love about it, man. Mm. And you ain't gonna get them. No I damn water else. By God, let me tell you, it is smooth as pouring water off of a damn roof. You know, the flavor, man, you, you can taste the sap summer. I wouldn't be scared to say this is one of the very best that we've ever run. I'm gonna tell you what, Richard and Craig ain't gonna know what hit them. Hell no, they ain't no damn way they can p compete with that jar right there, baby. No. No way. And if anybody says anything different, we know they're a damn liar. I feel like we're back on track. Can't wait to bring this to the market and make some money. Once people taste this stuff right here, they are gonna be buying Mike and Jerry's moonshine from here on out. Get your pecker and let's get out of here. I'm gonna get my pecker. <laughs> it won't be long before it hits the streets. I'm telling you that right now. That flavor is just too damn good. Yeah, we'll get her and get this old stashed up in the old barn. One more load down. Me and Jerry, we've got another damn run out call run off. We gotta go stash 10 more gallons in our stash house. Bringing liquor to the stash house, it's like putting money in the bank. It is a maze for sure. Mm hmm. Amazing we can get back here. <laughs> That's right. <clears throat> Something don't look right here. It's not quite exactly like we left it. I had it tucked in underneath that you did. piece of scenery right there. You did, didn't you? Yeah, all the liquor's here. That's still alcohol. Maybe I'm letting my imagination run wild. All the liquor's here. It, everything is still stacked right here just the way me and Jay left it. But I don't like the way this looks. The elbow's still here. Was it standing up in the box like that? No, I think we had it laying flat down. That's what I was thinking, it was just laying down flat in that box. You don't worry, somebody's been just snooping around, do you? I don't know, that's kind of weird. You know, uh, me and Jerry, we, we took Richard and Craig's thump elbow to set, set them back, and I know I laid it flat in this box. It ain't like somebody's tore up anything. I think we just need to go ahead and just check the damn camera. This camera that we've got, it's remote activated. Anything that crosses its path, it's going to kick on and record for two minutes. I'm going to fast through some of this stuff here. Yeah. Oh, oh what, what is that? That's somebody walking in right there. Oh, that's damn Richard and Craig, man. What the hell? They're looking through oh. our There goes picking that damn elbow up. So they've been here. Why is our stuff still here? They may not want us to know. That they've been here? That they've been here. I don't give a damn why they didn't take nothing. Well, by God, they have missed their damn chance, is all I can tell them, because they ain't getting this damn liquor. We got two damn options. Get it all out of here, or get up in this loft and watch them until they come back. 